capture the story. <laughs> capture the story with um, what the Lord said to me this morning. Uh, whoop, there we go. Um, we're going to hear a story. Very memorable story. Most of us know the story. And it's very easy, perhaps, to switch off. <laughs> but this is a story that has captivated my attention over several weeks now as we bring this sort of um, themed uh, preaching to, to its end. We've been thinking about meals with Jesus and there's so many that we could have chosen from and every one of them is incredibly meaningful and every one of them if you look at them individually has got something in it that you could just capture just hold on to because god's speaking to you through it a little bit like that picture at the beginning of the children exploding with joy as the water exploded all over them. So there is, I believe, something in this story for each one of us this morning. Uh, and so we're going to have a reading from John's Gospel. Um, and Sarah is going to come and read us through this beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture. reading from John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 1 to 15. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, which is why he said, not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done for you. Jesus said, I have set you an example that you also 
should do as I have done for you. Doing the things that Jesus did. Meals with Jesus. Two, three minutes on around your table. What is God saying to you in that story? What stands out? What's the big standout thing in that story for you? What do you think God is saying to you this morning through that story? The Holy Spirit is at work revealing God's thoughts to you. So share them just for a few moments with each other. Okay. Oh goodness, I do like DIY sermons. There is an actual written sermon and I will send it out, but this is so much more fun. Um, and uh, I, I'm not saying that what I've prepared that I'm not now using isn't also fun. It is, but this is more important. Um, I'm not going to ask you to feed back because we would really be here all morning, but you can over coffee or over communion, which we will be doing, we'll be taking the, uh, doing the breaking of the bread in a little while. And your reactions to this story can form part of the sharing that you'll be doing as you break bread together around the table. But we're going to move on because... We're going to have a passage of scripture that is, to me, and, and in my spiritual reflections this week, it's deeply and intimately linked to the story we just had. So, um, Tony is going to come and read a second reading. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, starting at the first verse. Then the angel showed me, John, the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign ever and ever. We thank God for his word to us Amen. Oops. Put back on. This is the same John, the same guy that stood in awed, perplexed wonder as Jesus knelt down beneath his, uh, beneath him and washed his feet. The same John who wrote the Gospel of John and who lived to a grand old age reflecting for so many years on, on what he had seen and experienced of Jesus. That incredible moment that the world is going to celebrate like mad but miss the whole point of. The moment when heaven touched earth and God was born in Bethlehem. Jesus taught us to pray for God's kingdom to come, didn't he? And he taught us to pray for God's will to be done. One of the things I've been doing this week is going through scripture to find out how many times God says this will happen. No, this might happen. If you're really, 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 really good, this might possibly happen. But this will happen. When we pray that prayer, we are praying a servant prayer. We are standing in the footsteps of the one who said, but not my will be done. The will of the Father. I only do, I only say what I see 
hear my father doing, said Jesus. He is the supreme model of the servant. And this is the kind of glory, <laughs> the glory picture that John is given of what is coming. But it's not simply what is coming, it's where Jesus came from. The heavenly places where God dwells one day will come. Thy will be done, finish the phrase, on earth as it is in heaven. There's no doubt there, we pray for it, mainly because God wants to align our hearts with his intention. God's will, <laughs> will be done. This is coming. This is what John saw. This is the glimpse of the glory of God that was veiled in a baby, but this is what the whole world will see. We sometimes sing, all will see. How great, how great is our God? Do we realize what we're singing? We're singing biblical truth. All will see. What a glimpse of glory this is, is it not? To me, it's like that exploding water. It's like that picture of the well at the very beginning of our worship. This is what's coming. I can't tell you how many times I've sat next to people who have been drawing their last breath and sisters and brothers envied them. It's bizarre, isn't it? Grief, yes. But, my God, the glory of God in that moment when the person breathes themselves out of earth and into the presence of God. And one day, one day coming down the track, do you see this? Because this is John's attempt to put into words what it will look like when heaven touches earth. In all its completeness, in all its absolute fullness. This is the moment when there will be no more praying, thy will be done, because his will will be being done and no one will need to pray it anymore. Or try and remember the order that it goes in, or which version that we're praying it in. Because this will be the moment, and this is our vision. Last week, Dan had a beautiful word from God, which he, he gave to us after the service. Um, I asked him to, to, to think on what God is saying to us as a, as a church, as Connect. And he said, all I can hear over and over again is, this is who you are. This is who you are. We are a people of God walking towards this future. This is God's future. And this is our future. This is what is coming. It's just epic. The second part of it. I don't know about you, but I've got to the point where I don't turn the television news on. I really have. I've kind of like, I actually felt last week, I thought I've had it. I just can't take any more negativity and I can't, and I can't take any more pictures of suffering. And, and, and then I thought to, back to this because the book of Revelation it's full of insight into the tribulations the world is going to go through. And scholars spend far too long trying to analyse it and work out what means what, in my humble opinion. It's a picture of a world that's going to hell. And we don't need, a, we don't need to kind of do anything except open a newspaper, turn on the TV. We see that, don't we? Do we see it in our friends and, and, and family and in our street? Last night we had our street progressive supper, um, which you have, meal, you have a starter in one house and an, an order in another and a main course in another and, and it ended quite late, which is why I'm possibly not making sense, but I hope I am. Um, and, I, and I was listening to people's stories. Because God said to me, capture the story. This is the story captured for us. Last night, I heard lots of people's stories and they were deeply broken, 
stories. In the middle of celebration, there was brokenness and fear and anxiety and a complete lack of agreement about what is going on in the world and why it's happening the way it is. And a complete lack of vision. They don't see this. This is why I get out of bed every morning, because this is what's coming. Whatever Satan throws at us, whatever the world throws at us, whatever the stupidity of our sin and disobedience creates for us, this is still what is coming. And it's amazing. It's just amazing. There is nothing in it that would make it onto the 10 o'clock news. Nothing. The only news here is good news. Isn't it? <laughs> and I can't get my... I can't. Can you get... I can't get my head around it. It's joy. And it's peace. And it's healing. How the world needs healing, yes? How we, each one of us, need healing, yes? We need physical healing. We need emotional healing. We need spiritual healing. We need to know again the joy of our salvation. Come on. This is coming. Heaven touches earth the moment someone looks at Jesus kneeling at their feet and wonders why they're doing that. Heaven touches earth when someone explains to someone else that I was in a pit of my own making and Jesus stepped out of this glory into my pit and took me out, forgave my sins. And I've never been the same since. Oh yes, it's been tough. The Bible says it's going to be tough. But this is what's coming. And that's why I keep going. And that's why I keep serving. And that's why I keep sharing. And that's why on Saturday next week, I am going to be standing there with Juliet and whoever else turns up to testify and witness to the God who came from heaven to kneel at my feet, wash my feet, and take my rubbish onto the cross with him. Burying it forevermore. Setting me free to live with him forever. The link, my friends, is on this screen. The link is the first. <laughs> oh, his servants will serve him. Jesus says to John and Peter and the disciples, unless you're washed clean, unless you let me do this for you, you can have no part in me. How far do we let Jesus serve and minister to us? How much of ourselves do we keep back? How much of our dirt do we try and cover up with socks? <laughs> that reflects the discussion we were having over there. Jesus, you need washing, all of you. His death on the cross is like the bath, you're bath, you're bathed, <laughs> you're saved. But you still need to bring some of the stuff out into the light and let him deal with it. And those of you who get it will do what I have done. That's it. That's it. Simple as that. What is our mission? To connect people to the love of God. Because that's what Jesus did. Every second and every day of his life. And it's his servants who will be there at the last. And those who have his name on their foreheads. Front and centre those who have given themselves to Christ. Actually, the word servant, we've played around with this word before, but here it's the, it's the Greek word for slave. <laughs> it doesn't simply even mean the lowest servant of the lowest servant who gets to do the scummy job. It's the one who has sold themselves to Jesus. The one who understands he has bought them with a price. 
that the cost he bore is your life and you're his and he owes you. <laughs> it's that kind of faith that will sustain you to this point where you will be there with no more evil, no more pain, no more darkness, no more sickness, no more satanic influences in operation because God's will will have been done. Hallelujah and amen. I had a picture for this <laughs> and it actually came up in our story. The momentum is from God to us, always. Always. Do big yourself up in this big picture. <laughs> he loves you, but the work of salvation is his and his alone. The momentum is from him to you. That's it. You can do nothing except accept it. The momentum is always from him to us. But the momentum is also something that needs to explode out. Like that water in the picture at the beginning. Like the joy in the, in the, in the children. They realised they were going to get washed. They were going to no longer smell anymore. They were going to get clean. They were going to get healthy. <coughs> the total explosive outwardness of that is contagious, isn't it? Now I can tell you, on Thursday at Cafe Connect, utter hysteria broke out over a nut. Not an edible nut, but a tiny little metal nut. And for about ten minutes, there was utter hysteria. It was joyous. I had no idea what had happened, because the owner of the nut couldn't explain why the nut had become so funny. And everybody around the owner of the nut was laughing. But then I started laughing, because laughter is contagious, is it not? Because it's joy. It's a symbol of joy. Out, anyone coming past would have seen visibly something joyous was going on. Jesus, the servant, says, go be the servant. Do it in joy. Don't do it out of duty. Do it because you, you, you're amazed that he loves you. <laughs> That's the motivation. It needs to go, go woof, out. Next Saturday, come share the explosion of joy. And then it goes back up. Because that's what we've been doing. We've been going, God, you're amazing. <laughs> God, you're awesome. And it goes back round again, and round again, and round again. It's grounded. This love is grounded. And for us, it's grounded in bread and wine. So, so we're going to give thanks. And um, we've got a few words, just a little reminder about what we're doing. And then you're going to be sharing together. So, I'd like you to join in with the words, and we say things out loud. Some of us are really quiet and don't say very much. So having a prayer on the screen that you can join in with is a way of adding your voice in. So we join in with these prayers. So first of all, I'm just going to say what we're doing. We're obeying. We're being obedient servants. In obedience, we remember how on the night before Jesus died, he got up from the table, he knelt before the disciples, and he washed their feet. We remember that later he blessed and shared bread and wine, symbols of his death on the cross by which our sins are forgiven. Nothing we need do except receive. Holy Spirit, we just, we just ask that you would come and make yourself known to us. You, we know that you are here with us. You, you're present to us. Would you come and make this communion meal a truly holy, healing moment for us? That we might receive with renewed joy the Father's cleansing and healing grace through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Jesus, servant Saviour, friend and King, we are in awe that you kneel before us in love. Forgive us our disobedience and our unwillingness to follow your example and sacrifice. Wash away the sin and shame that seeks to cling to us and condemn us. And as we join in the meal of heaven, 
restore in us the joy of salvation, that we might see heaven touching us. Jesus, thank you for your amazing grace and mercy, for this foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for us and all those who bear your name. Come, Holy Spirit, reveal the Father's love in Christ our Saviour to me and to us all. So I'm going to invite you around your table to give thanks in whatever way you want to, whether it's a prayer or to share a story. When did you last laugh? When did you last sense the presence of God? And I would love you to just bless one another. Give a word of encouragement to someone. Say a prayer of blessing. Um, it doesn't have to take all day. Um, we do have homes to go to. Um, so just sort of keep it brief. But what I really want to do, and, and, and I feel this, felt this before, but it's been confirmed, that the Lord wants to do some healing amongst us this morning. And um, if you would like prayer for healing, um, how are we going to do this, Julia? What would you think? That we, we ask people to come to the end after, uh, um, during the last song, perhaps, for healing? Yeah. Would that, would that, would that oh, be? No, actually, if people might want to do it before or after they take communion. Yes, yes. Or so if you would... Have to have it in the... Yeah, okay. Has anybody sensed God's saying this is your moment to have prayer for a specific thing? That you would like prayer for a specific thing? Um, if that is the case, just kind of can you just put your hand up because it, it would be perfect if there's one on every table, wouldn't it? But it might not work out perfectly. Right, okay, so we've got Graham over there. Anybody else on the table would really like prayer for, for healing? And it could be physical, emotional, spiritual, remember. We, we're covering the whole gamut. Anyone else on the, on the table? Yeah, okay. Got a table full over there, which is really, really good. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up. I'm going to ask you to share with one another, actually. Make it gentle. Let's just have this as a very gentle. If, some, if you would really value your friends around you now to pray for something, ask them. Should we do that all together? And if it happens during a chewing of a piece of bread, that's absolutely fine. It, it, it's a meal, not some kind of, I don't know, whatever. Just... Just go as you feel led, and I'll, I'll come back to you guys and be on with you. Okay? And you're going to put some music on in the background. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are here with us. We thank you that by your spirit and through your word you have spoken to us. We thank you that we are precious to you beyond our imagining. We thank you that you 
didn't think equality uh, with God and the glorious heavenly places was something to cling on to, but you let go of that and came down to us, to be with us, to be one of us, to take from us all the guilt and shame and sin. And to bring healing. Thank you. Thank you for your salvation. Oh, Jesus, help to grow the joy in us. <laughs> help us to just receive from the water of life. Flow across the, the barrenness in our hearts and our lives. Enrich our imaginations. Help us to see to see what you are doing, to see how you are working and help us play our part in your great purposes. Thank you for all that you are and all that you have done and for this special time together. Amen. Amen. So we come to bring ourselves into land and to, to remind ourselves one last time that we have the opportunity to enter into the joy of service and I know occasionally the leadership team whinge about this but it's one of the greatest days in the year as far as I'm concerned <laughs> when the church leaves the building and goes outside has no idea what's likely to happen, just a bit like this morning. And it can become just incredibly joyous. I'm going to ask Jean to uh, retrieve the nut that caused the hilarity. And we're going to give it quite a place in the soul space tent. <laughs> and see if we get some joy generation um, from it. A little bit like Peter's handkerchief or was it Peter had, you know, a little bit of joy in the village would be fabulous next week. Um, and this is our opportunity to bless Angie, bless us, bless this. Should we just pray a blessing? Father, your, your vision that you've set in front of us is amazing. To, heaven touching earth, we want more. We want to see more glimpses of your kingdom. We want to see more people connecting to your love. Next week we get the chance to get out there and to seek, um, to mission with you. It's a quest. You're putting us on a quest and it's a joyous quest. Help us to um, see as you see and to help people be healed and find salvation and find Jesus for themselves, to be their friend. Um, and as we serve, let us do it with joy, Jesus. Help us to do it with joy in our hearts and know that it's you that we are serving. Um, as we seek to connect people, more people, to your love that you have for them and for us. Amen. Amen. Amen.